Welcome back. Now that we've created a document, let's have a look at inserting pictures into the document. This could be a photo that you've taken or a picture from the internet. Inserting an image is the same as inserting any other object, such as a table or shape. It can be done from the Insert ribbon. Click on Insert near the top of the window to display the Insert ribbon. Each of the pictures is a button that will perform an action. The exact layout you see may look slightly different. Microsoft Word adjusts the size of the buttons to fit as many as it can, so if the window isn't maximised, the buttons may look slightly different. The buttons are grouped together into related sections. The area that we will be focusing on is illustrations. This is the area that can be used to insert pictures and objects or shapes. To insert a picture, we have two options. Picture which allows us to insert a picture or image from our computer or online picture, which allows us to find and insert pictures from the internet. Let's insert a picture from our computer first. Click pictures to open a window that we can use to browse and locate the picture to insert. If you have pictures saved from a camera, for example, they are likely to be located in the pictures folder under this PC. Click on the picture to insert and click on the insert button in the bottom right. With the image inserted, a couple of things have happened, along with the picture being placed in the document, of course. The first, if you look closely at the image, you should see small circles around the edge, one in each corner and one halfway along each edge. These are placeholders and are used to resize the image. If you can't see these circles, it means that the image isn't selected. Just click on it once and the placeholder should appear. So to resize the picture, click and hold the mouse button on one of the placeholders. With the mouse button pressed, move the mouse. You should see the image resize. If you've clicked on one of the corner placeholders, the image will maintain its aspect ratio. If you've clicked one of the placeholders along the edge, and are resizing, the image is squashed or stretched to the new size. Once you are happy with the new size, just release the mouse button. A little tip, if you've made a mistake and want to try again, perhaps you squashed the image and, and now can't get it to look right. Click on the little curved arrow pointing to the left in the top of the window. This will undo the last action you did. You should be able to click this one or more times to restore the image to the size it was when it was first inserted. If you accidentally click this button too many times, the image may disappear altogether as it will undo the action of inserting the picture. If this happens, just click the curled arrow pointing to the right to redo the last action. The other thing that happens when you insert a picture, or in fact when you have a picture selected, Remember, select a picture in the document just by clicking on it, is that the ribbon gives you options related to editing the picture. This ribbon allows us to make changes to the picture. The first few options allow you to make colour corrections or to add filters. Any button on the ribbon with a little arrow means that there are more options. As you hover your mouse over each of the options, Word will give you a preview. To accept the preview, just click the option. To ignore the choice, just move the mouse somewhere else. The next section allows you to add a border. This works in exactly the same way. Hover your other mouse over for a preview and click to select, or move your mouse away to keep the current version. The border section has lots more options. To see these, click the arrow in the bottom right. Of the over on the right side of the picture format ribbon is a button called Crop. Click this and the placeholders around the image change to little black bars. Now, using the same technique used to resize the picture will allow me to cut or crop the picture to the section that I want to display. Once you've adjusted the placeholders to get the image the way that you want it, just click on the crop button in the ribbon again to accept the crop selection. If you change your mind, just click the crop button again to adjust the placeholders. Next, we need to select the text wrapping option. This dictates what will happen when text is entered around the image 
or what happens when the image is placed in the middle of a page of text. I have a few paragraphs of text here. I'm going to click somewhere in the middle. This is where I want to insert the image. So now I do the same as before. Select the insert ribbon, select to insert a picture, find the picture to insert and finally click insert. With the image selected and the picture format ribbon visible, click on the text wrapping button. The default option is in line with text. With this option, you can see that inserting the image into a paragraph of text just causes the line the image is inserted into to break around the image. This might be okay for small images, but it's not normally the best option for a large picture such as this. Square, tight and through are very similar. As you can see, allow me to place the picture with a full page of text wrapping around it. Top and bottom causes a break in the flow of the text and behind and in front will place the image behind the text, hiding it from view or laying the text over the image. It's also possible to rotate an image. With the image selected, you should find this little curled arrow at the top center. Click and hold the mouse button down on this arrow and once again, move the mouse while still holding the mouse button down. Not only does the image rotate around its center, but depending on the text wrap option you set earlier, the text in the document adjusts to accommodate the image. Now that we have had a good look at what we can do once we insert a picture, let's consider where else we can get images from. As mentioned earlier, there are two options on the insert ribbon. The first, which we've looked at, is picture, allowing us to select an image from our computer. The other is online picture. This gives us a few categories where we can start to narrow down the type of picture that we are looking for. Once a category is selected, we see several pictures in that category. Alternatively, we can use the search box at the top of the window to find an image. Just type in the search box and click search on the right. To insert one of the found images, just click it and click insert in the bottom right. Once inserted, you have all the same editing, alignment and rotation options that we had before. It's possible to find images with a general internet search and use these in your document. Let me show you how. I'll start at the Google homepage and just search for the topic I'm looking for. Once I have a list of results, near the top is an option to narrow my search to images. Now, I just see the related images. To insert one into your document, click on it, which opens this panel on the right. Now, right click on the selected image and select copy with the left mouse button. With this done, move back to Word and you can either press and hold the control key on the keyboard. That's the one with the letter CTRL on it. It's normally in the bottom left of the keyboard. With this still pressed, hit the letter V and release both keys. Or you can select paste in the ribbon. This is found on the home ribbon on the left. A note about licensing when using pictures from the internet. You should be careful about the copyright of the images you are using. It is illegal to reuse most images you find online without the permission of the creator or author. There is a quick way to limit your search to just find images that can be reused. Once you are looking at the image search results in Google, Click on Tools, then click on Usage Rights. Select one of the options that is relevant to your use case. Now you should be OK to reuse the images that you find. You might need to give credit to the source of the image. To check on the copyright details for an image, click on it. You can then follow through to the website that is holding the image to check if it can be reused. In this video, I've shown you how to insert images how to position and resize the images that you insert, as well as cut and crop the selection of an image that you want to use. I showed you how to find images from various places, including certain images that you already have on your computer, using Word's built-in image finder, and finally, how to find and insert images on the wider internet. We finished off with a brief discussion on copyright of images that are found online. Try searching for more information on Creative Commons licensing to investigate this further. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.